I'm waiting. The Prince of Life is there. He flows in the river, soars on the summer air. His love is all around you. The Prince of Life is there. Open up your Good morning. My name is Mike Silberg, and I thank you for joining us in Columbus, Ohio this morning. Uh, the title of today's talk is We Deliver God from Hell. And I want to thank uh, all you people who are watching. I really appreciate that. And uh, we're going to start with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for all the blessings you give us every day and we commit this talk into your hands and we ask for your touch on it in jesus name we pray um the piece of art behind me is actually from what i understand it's the last self-portrait van gogh made and this is leoma's um interpretation of it and uh obviously uh, vincent was a troubled individual but a man of tremendous talent. And uh, that's kind of what we're talking about today. Um, what, am I, what do I mean by delivering God from hell? This is kind of unusual, right? Well, first of all, we don't understand how holy God is and how unapproachable he is because of his holiness. We don't understand how disgusting all sin is to him and how reprehensible sinners are to him, how reprehensible we are to him. We are the ones who brought this about, not God. But because of his deep love, he has made a way to bridge this enormous gap between us and him through the cross. And this tells us a lot about him. It must kill God on his inside. It must be a hell to him to not be able to approach us because he can't. His holiness would destroy us. He can't just come barging into our lives. So he had to do something else. He had to come into our lives on our terms, so to speak, put aside his holiness, clothe himself with our flesh, clothe himself with our sin, and go to the cross. The cross shows God will go to any lengths to remedy this situation. To see us in our sin and to be separated from us because of our sin causes the deepest grief to him. It is an ongoing hell for him. I have a good friend in Israel that had a rough start in life. You know, her childhood was a disaster. Okay, but later on in life when she became an adult, she came to know Jesus. She became saved. And when her friends heard that she became a believer in God, you know, they said to her, how could there be a God? If he exists, why wasn't he there for you when you were going through those hard times when you were a child? Well, she replied, that's a lie. He was there with me. He was there for me. I just didn't know it at the time. And he suffered more than I did. The only way for God to be del delivered from this hell he is in because he sees us in our hell is to have someone take full advantage of the cross to have someone come alongside him in his place of holiness and loneliness this is why he desperately needs us we're the only way god can be delivered from his hell we are it <laughs> does it sound too much isn't God, God all by himself? How could we possibly impact him in a way that means something to him? 
what could he possibly need from us? Well, we know what God needs because his needs are our needs. From the beginning, God created us in his image and in his likeness. We feel the same things God feels because we are like him. And he feels the same things we feel because he is like us, only without sin. Think of this. Imagine you're in God's position. You have all power, all authority. You're almighty. You have everything. But before you created anything, you are what? You're sitting out there in the universe. Well, really nothing, because you haven't created the universe yet. You're sitting out there in nothing, alone. You're sitting out there in darkness and nothingness, all alone. Do you know? Do you know that that's one way hell is described? It is called a place of outer darkness, a place of utter and complete loneliness. That's hell. You know, I was watching the movie Martian. You ever seen that movie? Pretty cool movie. It's about rescuing an astronaut stranded on Mars. He had been there for some time and was beginning to think he would never be rescued. He might never see another human being. So he was frantic. Towards the end of the movie, I realized it was about God. I realized God is that man. God is the man stranded on Mars. I actually said this while I'm watching the movie. You're the Martian. You're the man stranded on Mars. God is that man. And he is stranded. He's alone. He's all by himself. He has no one to talk to. God is the ultimate lonely heart. Like the man on Mars, God needs to be rescued. God needs to be rescued from his isolation. He needs to be rescued from his loneliness, his eternal loneliness. He needs to be rescued from his hell. Let's put ourselves in God's position again. If we were alone like God, what would we want? What would you want more than anything? Maybe somebody to talk to? Maybe somebody to share a laugh with? Maybe somebody to have a cup of coffee with who wants to hear about our day? Not a robot, not a pre-programmed mindless machine, but a real live person with their own thoughts and desires. Someone we can interact with, someone we can share life with, someone we can love. Look at nature. What do we see? All kinds of living beings living in their own social circles with their own kind, all getting meaning and purpose out of living their lives with one another. Birds sing together. Dogs chase each other. Dolphins jump out of the water together. Horses run. Cows graze. Bees swarm. All drawn together. Living together. Experiencing the joys of each other of their own kind. But what about God? Who does God want to be with? Who does God want to spend eternity with? Does he want to be with birds? Does he want to be with dogs or cats or pigs or goats? Of course not. He wants to be with you. He wants to be with me. We're created in his image. Look carefully at the first and greatest commandment as quoted by Christ. It is preceded by this declaration. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God. The Lord is one. Did you catch that? The Lord is one. We have the, an idea that God is a trinity, three and one. The main number that defines God is not three. It's one. Now, what's the songwriter say? This is from the Three Dog Night, a song from Three Dog Night. One is the loneliest number there could ever be. Why do you think we're here? Why do you think God created us? Why do you think God made you? Jesus answers that with the second part of that verse, which declares God's first and greatest commandment, which is why you're here. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. You, we, have been created to love God. Why? Not just to fill the void in our hearts, but also to fill the void in God's heart. It's lonely to be alone. He needs us. He really does. If he doesn't, why did he create us? Just to fill up space? Here's God's greatest commandment again. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That's what this is all about. That's why you are here. That's why you were created. God needs you to love him. He needs you to deliver him from his, holiness, from his loneliness. He needs you to save him from hell. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sorry, I ended the song prematurely.